I want to talk to you about demography and party strategy. In, in some ways, we've been talking to you about this the whole time as we think about women and the vote, but I want to th uh, think about this in a different direction as well. And the first question I have as we think about this is why are American presidential candidates in interested in securing the Black vote? And so I just want to kind of think about and talk about some of the things that we might know uh, in our minds and know in conversation with other people, but that we don't talk about in the literature as often. So I think that there are two things that we need to consider. I consider these things in my book, The Great Migration and the Democratic Party, and in a related article in the Du Bois Review about uh, how this relates to national politics. But I think Black migration is critically important to American politics. And I think that for the purpose of this conversation today, it's important to remember that presidential candidates want to win the electoral college. And when you think about presidential candidates and their desire to win, to win the electoral college, they often start by thinking about the large electoral college delegations. Although sometimes they think about the smaller ones as well, they often think about the large ones and they think about the ones that have the capacity or the likelihood of swinging to their side as opposed to the other side. And so we hear lots about battleground states, we hear lots about swing states. When we think about the large electoral college delegations for the purpose of this talk, I'm thinking or talking about those states that have 15 or more delegates or 15 or more votes in the electoral college. And these are the states that represent those numbers. We're talking about California, we're talking about Michigan, Ohio, Florida, New York, North Carolina, and so on. When we think about these places that have these large electoral college delegations, we might also think about places that also have black populations. And so again, the question is why are they presidential candidates so worried about the black vote? And I think the answer has to do with both the electoral college and black migration. And so when you look to see where black people live and where they have lived historically, the same states are the states where there are large electoral college delegations and large populations of Black people. Some of these states are states that presidential candidates have cared about since the Great Migration, which was a movement of Black people from the South, outside the South, to many places in the North and in the Midwest and the West between 1915 and 1970. Black people are moving again, which has more ramifications for American politics. And they're moving from those places where they went in the Great Migration and returning to the South. And you see here that there is um, notes or there are notes about where people used to live or where they went in the Great Migration, New York, Detroit, Chicago, Detroit, Los Angeles, and that folks are going back to the South to places like Atlanta, Charlotte, Houston. Folks are interested in Washington, DC, although we have issues with gentrification here, so that makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to see. And I think that these changes in migration, this return migration pattern, creates new pol possibilities for American politics. So I don't think that we get an Andrew Gillum or a Stacey Abrams as uh, the candidate that represents the Democratic Party in Florida or in Georgia without the changes that come from return migration. And I don't think they get as close as they do to winning, or I might say even actually winning and having it stolen from them without this return migration to the South. Return migration matters not just for those gubernatorial campaigns or for state and local campaigns, but also for approaches to strategy in 2020 and beyond. Some of the places that we think about as important to presidential candidates in the 2020 election are important uh, also in the story of return migration. I'm thinking here about Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, for example. And so I'd say finally that return migration is another thing. This demographic location of Black people is another thing that helps us think about how the party behaves. And if you think about how Kamala Harris, Senator Harris, gets her a nomination to the Democratic ticket as its vice president, which I'm clearly excited about, I think that we have to think about demographics too, not necessarily thinking about Chicago here, but also thinking about 
um, the fact that she is a black woman and the fact that black women live in those states in large numbers and black women expect that the democratic party should be responsive to their demands to have folks in office and folks on the ticket who look like them. And so I'll stop there and look forward to entertaining any questions that you all might have about demographics as we do our Q&A.